Good morning, this is Angela with today's cup of tea. Today's topic is sort of like part two to my last webcast where I talked about packaging and how we are differently packaged because of our experience and because of what we want to learn and full acceptance of that as part of our whole path. And this part is pulled out very specifically because it's very, very important. It's very ingrained. It's a very, in, it's a very ingrained bias that we have developed through this existence. And that has to do with age and time. Because if we really jump up to the top of the mountain of perspective, right in, right in the beginning here, and say, okay, look, we're part of, we are the divine, we're part of the divine, and as the divine, we decided to create this existence, this experience, so we could have these experiences of the ego, of the perception of separation, of splitting and then splitting, and then creating and then coming, you know, into this, um, perception of, an in, of, of different individuals and all these different individuals having all these different experiences and all the different ways we can have them. And in doing so, we created time. And there is no time in the universe. We've created it. We've created it so that we can measure things a certain way. And in doing so, we've put a lot of credence and a lot of weight into the value of certain things because of time. <clears throat> and the ego has really, really done a great job at it, so that we've sort of gotten lost in it. We have, um, in many ways, created a, separ a perception of separation, another wall, having to do with ages. And in, in many ways, not only with, with others, in saying things like, oh, well, you know, that generation doesn't understand, or or what does the elder generation know, that things are different now, or, you know, there's so many different biases that way. Or the really, really ingrained ones that many don't even hear themselves saying is things like, I'm too old for that, or, oh, these old bones just can't do that anymore, or I can't do this, I can't do this because I'm too young, I can't do this because I'm too old, I can't do this, you know, or, oh, well, you know, <laughs> We've created our identities around our ages in many respects. We've, we, especially when you get to a certain age where all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, you know, mm, I don't have to do, and really what, what you're saying is I don't have to do that because I can use this as my crutch to say, okay, I'm a certain age. I have friends between, but I'm in my 40s. I have, I have friends from their 20s all the way to their 70s. Friends. And it's very rare that age specifically ever comes up in conversation. It's ever a bias, of, you know, of anyone. And and typically, as soon as somebody does that or brings it up, then right away that just points right to something they have to clear. Oh, well, you know, you don't understand. When I was that age, I did this, but I have to do this now because I'm this age. You don't have to do anything. What we do when we culturally disempower ourselves and we allow that which is around us to tell us how we are supposed to be and how we're supposed to act, eventually we believe it deeply enough that it goes into the cellu cellular memory. And that is why we age the way we do now. And that is why certain things happen. Because we believe them to happen. We, uh, we accept it as truth. We accept it as a belief that of, of, of reality. And in doing so, that's what we create. So a lot of the work that I do with people these days, we have a lot of conversations about releasing those biases, releasing that cellular memory and energy so that <clears throat> you can be ageless, so we can be back to being ageless because we, we came here in initially and we did live a long time. The difference is that once you can release that, it does. It, we, we are coming back to agelessness because we're coming back to the divinity, which is eternal, right? And so if we broaden our perspective and said, all right, maybe I've been here for hundreds, maybe thousands of lives, and coming back to the divine and starting the next existence, and then if you cut away the perception of time and separation of all that, then it doesn't really matter because we've all been here for many years or in another existence and another uh, star system for many years and many experiences. So <clears throat> then we can be free to not limit, to, to be limitless, to stop limiting ourselves by saying, oh, well, 
Yeah, there was a time when I would do that, but I just, you know, it's just, you know, it's the age thing. We can change that. We can change everything. We have that power within us. So that's one part of it. The other part that I see that's pretty rampant is for, between generation to generation. You see people saying that all the time. Oh, well, you don't understand. Or what is up with this generation? In fact, I was having coffee with a friend of mine, a, I don't know, like a month ago, who has a pretty successful business. And I think it's like 15 years old now. And she's got like 40 employees. And she said, you know, I just don't understand. I don't understand the people in their 20s today. I don't understand them coming out of college and graduate school and they just have all these expectations and they want the highest salaries and they want to work 35 hours a week and take all their lunch hours and not have to work overtime. I just don't understand it. And I laughed and said, okay, well, back up a minute. Why is that bad? <laughs> because, you know, when I was in corporate, when I left in 2006, I, had that, I sort of had that mindset too. But... What the way I work with people today, and and how I'm how we're we're working together to free ourselves from our limitations, then why are we putting expectations on others? Because they just look at things differently than we do. And I said to her, "Okay, so we we grew up in the generation that was after the, our parents' generation. Our parents' generation told us that we were supposed to grow up and work for a company and." Um, be there for our entire lives and be loyal to the company, all that kind of stuff, because that's what their generation understood. Okay, so we did that. Not only that, but as females, we had to go and break the glass ceiling and do all that stuff. And we accepted that we would work four times as hard as, as many of the men in that time to get a partial, you know, part of the salary that they had. And, and we accepted that. And so we just took that onto our shoulders and we worked through that. And not only that, but even the men in our generation, then they sort of had to straddle and, and figure out how to change their expectations of themselves and of the women around them as well. There are all these different things that we had to deal with, with our, within our generation. And once we, hit, once we actually hit management in corporate, what did we do? After we worked a zillion hours that we felt like we had to pay our dues and made like no money in doing it, then we got to a certain point get into management and then what was the first thing I know the first thing I did was okay well let's get work ba work life balance in order here because this is ridiculous and so I was really big on letting people work from home when they wanted to and um, you know as long as they got their job done I didn't care if they got their job done in 30 hours or 80 hours as long as they got their job done and that was okay but now why is it because they're coming out of college expecting that how can we find that wrong because we're not imparting because we're not doing the favor and the ego is not feeling good about allowing that and sort of having them on our, our you know having somebody like on our dangly but you know on, on the dangling grapes that's really an egoic thing and she said you know I never really thought of it that way and I said yeah what can we learn from them that's what you have to think is what can we learn from those who are how we perceive as different from us because we aren't. These are all different elements within ourselves. So what are we putting out there in front of us so that we can learn and accept about ourselves? So there are just different perspectives that each group has come together as a certain kind of soul family and each, you know, what we call a generation to experience certain things at a certain time in our development here on earth. And so each period of time has different nuances and so it's important for us then to look at each other and say where is our sameness where do we connect heart to heart and where do we complement each other so that we can expand our perception that's the same thing uh, with everything spiritual it's we are instead of putting walls up and separating saying them and us anymore let, we're taking them down and let's say how about us and how do we do us and how do we accept both of us exactly as we are and expand ourselves into the divine that we are? So today's clearing um, is to get creator's truth on age, age and time, per perception versus reality, on <clears throat> the perception versus reality of age groups, of age expectations, of generations, and releasing all beliefs having to do with I don't understand a group X I don't understand blank any any group because of their age I dislike 
someone because of their age. We're pulling all beliefs related to that. I have biases because of age. We're going to pull all beliefs that are related to that, as well as beliefs according to I have to age, I have to get old, I have to become de decrepit because I'm getting older, I have to limit myself because of my age. We're pulling all those beliefs too. And replacing them with beliefs of I am ageless, I am limitless, I am without limitation because of age. I accept all as they are, regardless of what their physical age is on this earth. And all I know how to work with everyone with unconditional love and acceptance, regardless of their physical age. I know exactly how to work with work and coexist and assimilate with all at all ages in the highest and best, most positive way. And all the feelings that are associated with those beliefs, including um, that you're deserving, worthy, and able to, that it's possible, that it's allowed, that it's safe to, okay to, that you're ready, willing, and able to, that you have it in your life right now. And that um, to bring forward without trauma, drama, or illness, and with, without creation of a situation for experience, and with ease and grace and balance, harmony and joy, to bring forward any lessons via an instantaneous download with fully conscious understanding of that you still have to learn because of those biases and because of the perceptions we've created about about the um, about age. And any lessons, any more lessons you need to learn that you get via instantaneous download. And then you thank all the parties that have been involved in creating this for us and opening the doors to apology and forgiveness in all directions. We're going to pull the energy and memory of all those beliefs we're pulling from the cellular level, all versions of us, all times, all places into the ever-expanding universe and beyond, to infinity and beyond. Close those receptors, open new ones, and just saturate ourselves with unconditional love and agelessness and divinity. And then write it off as done in a, the Akashic records, clear the timelines, resolve, heal, clear the timelines in all directions to infinity with the platinum violet flames. And then write it off as, did I say that? We're going to write it off as completed in the Akashic records and then offer it to all ancestors and descendants as they so choose to accept. So if you want all of that, all you need to do is say yes, ages. Take a deep breath, clear your mind, and say yes, ages. And it is done. Have a great one. We'll talk to you next week. This is Angela, today's Cup of Sea.